Hi, and welcome to the 2019 paper two. Uh, it's question nine of the Leave Sir Ordinary Level. So as usual, if you want a copy of the set notes I'm working off, just send me an email at shanetroy at gmail.com. That email address will be in the description below. So question nine here, <clears throat> the last question on paper two is, I won't say it's annoying, but it's wordy. So there's a lot of complexity in the diagram here. Um, before we read it, let's try and see if we can make some uh, understanding of it. You have a radius of 100, okay? Then you have a, a creating a bigger triangle. So it's 100 as far as here. That's necessarily going to help us. And then 120 on, so an extra 20. Um, okay, there's an angle of 30 degrees there. So it's creating two angle triangles and one bigger um, isosceles triangle. She's not isosceles. She's not isosceles, sorry, my bad. So isosceles would have to have two sides of equal end. Okay, there's a lot going on here. So let's read through and see if we can make some more understanding. And be careful if you are writing on the diagram in the exam that you're not going to clutter it, then kind of you end up not being able to see the actual answer. Um, there's not as much space often as I'd like. Um, if you be like redraw it, sometimes redrawing a shape can help you to understand what's going on, especially in a complex one like this. But saying that R is a radar station located 120 meters, sorry, kilometers, north of a port P. Okay. The circle C, centered at R and with a radius of 100, shows the detection range of the radar station. When a ship enters the circle, it will be detected by the radar station at R. Okay, so everything in that is on the diagram. Figure 1 shows a ship leaving port P, so leaving here, traveling north, so tra traveling this direction. Um, at, at 30 degrees to the east, so that's due north, that's uh, west, east, south, whatever. So it's 30 degrees of north. So you could, for lack of a better word, um, okay, so right, so the ship enters the circle C at S, so <clears throat> comes in the detection range here and then exits up here. Okay, so state the obvious. Um, at Q, the ship is closest to R, here, okay, my diagram probably stretched, it doesn't quite look like that, and the angle PQR equals 90, so they've got the symbol for right angle, but they're stating it here. Okay, so again, let's go on, so let's try to see what we can find out about the shape in part A. The triangle PQR, so PQR, and they're kind of isolating that, and they're bringing it down here to help us out. Um, is shown in figure two. Find QR, okay, so find actually that length there. Um, okay, then find the length of QR. Right, so first thing is the right angle triangle. So my brain is going sine, cos, tan, or Pythagoras. Pythagoras won't work here because I only have one of the three sides. If I knew this side and this side, I could use Pythagoras to find the missing side. So it's going to be either sine, cos, or tan. If this is the angle, and this is the opposite. This is the hypotenuse. And the last side here is the adjacent. So I probably have it on the next page. Let's go there. So I'm picking some, I could write all three ratios, but sine is given by, sine of an angle is given by the opposite of the hypotenuse. And so I, looking for the opposite, have the hypotenuse and have the angle. So I have two of the three things. The missing thing is what I'm looking for. So sine will work. Okay, so the opposite is unknown. What news is 120, and as we said, the angle is 30. So sine 30 equals x over 120. We're going to rearrange it for x. In the 120 across, it was divided on the right, becomes multiplied on the left. Put that to the calculator, I got 60, and that is the unit there is kilometers. So that, I suppose, for lack of a better word, that length there is 60. Okay. Now, I just put that, put that there to help. That's 60. So the triangle QRS taken from figure one is shown in figure three. Use your answer from part A to find QS. So in part B here, the triangle QRS taken from figure one is shown in figure three. I'm going to use the answer from part A, so the 60, to help find QS. So we're looking here now, actually, Pythagoras will work, won't it? We're looking for that then there. So we're only focusing this smaller smaller uh, triangle triangle we have the longer side 
and one on the other side. See how Pythagoras will work. So I'm writing out Pythagoras' theorem there. And got the, the 160, so my two on two of the three unknowns, put them in. Okay, it's working out. I ended up okay, I ended up at 80 and the units there is kilometers. So if you cop what to do, that's actually fairly handy. Okay. So that's um a good 10 marks as well. If you just use Pythagoras, that's great. Now part C says find PS, give your answer correct to the nearest kilometer. Now if, I think if I'm not mistaken, okay. You had your bigger triangle, okay, so that was 60 and 120. You have this smaller thing, okay, it's actually 100. And then we worked out that this is 80. Okay, so I think we have to, if we do use Pythagoras, mark out the full length, the bigger triangle, a length there, then take 80 away from it, okay, and then we're done. So, yeah, so that's the answer. So I've got the, the, the bigger, and actually I've taken this thing in from the previous question, it's not given to you, uh, written out the, Q, the let's see, QP, so that big length there, plus this length, okay, um, or sorry, this big length, take away the smaller length, equals our is this bit so let's just state that there so we find the bigger length the qp use pythagoras so the bigger triangle again it's supposed to be a line but uh it's 120 okay apologies it's the use the mouse is horrible for doing the for writing it um so the 120 equals 60 plus x squared now this is a bit different in the longer side is on the is on the left you have to do a bit more manipulation than a normal pythagoras or so the pythagoras we had previous so we bring the 60 across, becomes subtracted on the left hand side. Now I've changed them into their actual number uh, out of power form. Do subtraction, I got this I'm here. Bring the square across, it turns into do the opposite and square roots, everything on the far side. To the calculator, I got this, and then rounded it to 104. Okay, so there's no early rounding there because the subtraction now is going to be whole number subtraction. So the, the full length is 104. Take away the 80 we found before, or whatever your answer you got there was. And I got a difference of 24 kilometers. And that's it. That's the answer. Okay, so that's part C. Now part D, part 1 here is a little more focused, okay? So you have, um, I think it's actually the same scenario. So we had just focused here on this triangle here. Now it is isosceles because it's 100 and 100. And then your longer side there. Um, so we're looking at considering the triangle RST. So that's shown. Use the cosine rule to find an expression for cos theta, where theta is the measure of the angle TRS. So we're trying to find that angle there. Hence show that the angle is the same as 106 degrees, corrected nearest degree. Now I've taken in the cosine rule from the math tables just for, uh, for, you know, for ease. Um, if we were trying to do anything else with this, let's just take problem solve this. I can't use Pythagoras because it's not right angled. Can't use the trig ratio of sine cos tan because it's not right angled. Uh, sine rule, if I wanted to find TS, I'd need to know an angle inside to be able to relate that to a different angle inside. Um, I have no angles in this one. Okay. Um, so we're looking at finding an expression here now. I'm actually, excuse me, I'm missing this length here. You can't use 106. If I recall it now, people are doing this a lot. A lot of people did use 106. But that's, you're trying to prove that. See, you kind of can't use it in your answer. Okay. Um, now, yeah. Okay, so I'm just remembering now the logic here. Okay, this side here, which I don't have. You remember from the last time that was cut down here. You learned that was 80. Like literally, I think the last part, and that's 80. So once you cop that, you go, actually, I do have the length of ST. It's 2 times 80, which is 160. Then I go, right, I can use the cosine rule. If I have all three sides, I can find the side opposite um, the one of those sides, the side I'm focused on. Now, if the cosine rule, there is three versions of it. Like, there's B squared equals A squared plus C squared minus 2, whatever. We generally only use the one type, and then we, we label it based on what we have. So the angle is what we're looking for. 
Okay, get rid of that fluff. So the angles we're looking at, so that has to be sine A, or big A. So angle A, rather. Actually, I'm messing this up. That's, a, if you want to call that angle A, that's side A. Apologies. Then side B or side C. So I know all three sides. So what I'm going to do here is actually rearrange the equation so that I have the A on its own. In fact, first of all, we're doing, we're finding what cos A is. So to do that, the b squared has to come across, the c squared has to come across, and then this chunk here has to move. Okay, so the first two go across and become subtracted. You can see them down there. This chunk here is all multiplied by cos a, it becomes across the far side of goal, it becomes divided. Now notice it doesn't change sign, because the operator is what's moving across. Okay, so they were multiplied, um, and that's why they become divided. Now that's equal to your cos theta. Now, if I put my numbers in, okay, and put it to the calculator, I'm going to end up with the um, this fraction negative seven over twenty-five. It's not wrong because you cos of a negative number is is allowed based on the on the ratio. Let's not go into too much detail of that, but just it's not it's not wrong. If I get inverse cos of that, okay, I end up with getting the one hundred six point two six. We were asked to put that to the nearest degree, so it rounds down to one hundred six. That's a tricky enough question, but if you get into it and you're fairly comfortable with your cosine rule and manipulation of formula, it's one you could be successful in, although there's only five marks. Now, so for a lot of work and complexity, not much reward. Shine life. Now, D part two here says, John sails directly from S to T. Okay, so that distance there of 160 kilometers. Mary sails from S to T and then uh, along the minor arc ST bit. Sorry. Yeah, so sorry. She, Mary sails around like this. Okay. So that was obviously a longer um, distance. Okay. Now find the difference between the, find the difference between the distance that John sails and the distance that Mary sails. And give your answer in kilometers. Okay, so we have that 160. That's what John sailed. Now Mary is saying that part of the circle. So she's, that part of the circle represents 106 of the 360 degrees of the circle. So like almost a third of it. Okay, so if the circle was 300 and she sailed a third of it, she's sailing 100. So we can find that by getting the circumference of a circle and then getting that part of the full circle. So we're multiplying it by the, the segment. So we're just stating that the 160 from the previous answer. We don't know what the arc is, so we're looking for. So this is the, the part, I suppose the circumference of a segment of a circle. We're looking for the angle, which is 106, and the R, which is 100. Put those numbers in, okay, we end up at 185. So say, or Mary sailed 170, sorry, 185 kilometers. Now we're looking for the difference between those two things. Okay, so we're just taking them away. And I got 25 and the units there is kilometers. So it's tricky enough. A lot of people aren't familiar with that formula as much as they probably should be. Even the fact they're using theta can be off-putting. I suppose they were in the previous part. There is 10 marks though. So good reward. And this should be easy. Sorry, part three question that doesn't ever stop okay so the sea in this region is estimated to have an average of one ship per 25 square kilometers at any time use this estimate to find the number of ships in the sector rst okay so we're looking to find out that area there okay and if that area is let's say that area turns out to be 100 square kilometers there's going to be four ships if it's whatever so we need to basically know what that area is now, just like the last one, it's the area of, not the full circle, but a segment of it. And that segment is the fraction 106 over 360. So you're using the formula again, but just kind of adapted for, like if you think about it, if that was the full circle, the angle would be 360. So 360 divided by 360 would be 1. So it wouldn't, it wouldn't need to be there. So a full circle is 1 times i times r squared. So this part of the circle is 106 degrees divided by the full 360. Multiply that by pi r squared. Okay, the radius is 100. And just put it to the calculator. Now I end up getting um, that number. 
Do I need to, to go decimal? I can. Well, why, why, do, why do I need to? That's just a number. I'm dividing that by the 25 kilometers. So how many 25 is in this number, whatever this number is? There is 370. Now it actually comes out as 370.009, but you can't have 0.009 of a ship. It's either 371 or 370. So we usually this scenario because it's so low, we'd round down. Okay, yeah. And that's it. No, that should be it. It is. Okay. So thanks very much. And that's the end of paper two uh, for 2019. And best luck.